So we are, we're actually, I, I love this song. It's, um, it's uh, the basis for a series that we're in. So we're using the song uh, title, Hope of the Ages. And today I want to take um, this part. I think I may have um, left out uh, an apostrophe or something like that. That's okay, isn't it? That's okay. okay, good. You get the message. The church he is building... Nothing can stop it. It's a city that's shining, a light in the darkness. I want us to pause for a minute. The church he is building. Now listen, there is a church that men are building. (laughs) There's lots that can stop that. And thank God... With time, it usually is. (laughs) But there is a church that Jesus has been building for 2,000 years. And there have been moments in human history when it looked like it has been stopped. Only to gloriously resurrect its head. Because it can't be stopped. Let's talk about that today. Now, this reminds me, and I think it probably does you as well, of a very familiar passage out of Matthew 16. So let me read it. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, uh, which was kind of out of the flow of the Jewish people, he basically went into Gentile territory to get a little time with his guys, so to speak. He asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, uh, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, and uh, he, he wanted to communicate two things. He wanted to pull out of them one thing and then put into them another thing. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And Jesus then says, and I tell you, say that with me, and I tell you, you are Peter, And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I love that. It's powerful. Now, it's interesting. I've spent some time this week just studying and going into that last last statement. And on this rock uh, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you know what I have found? Let me circle some. On this rock. Nobody agrees exactly what that is. Some say it's Peter. Some say it's the revelation of Peter. Now, you have an opinion and I have an opinion. But it's funny, I have two commentaries on Matthew that I was really careful in how I selected them a few years ago. And uh, these guys are both incredibly well-respected and powerful men of God. And they proved the exact, the exact opposite points. <laughs> and then the gates of hell. Some say that's death, and others says, I believe, and others say uh, that it is the hordes of hell, the, the principalities and powers. Uh, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But let me say something. There's one thing everybody agrees to. Without question, I will build my church. There is no diverse commentary this way or that way or this way or that way. And this statement is so pregnant and so powerful Let's take just a moment and look at it. The first thing I'd like to say, now this is for the word nerds. That's my new term. I have discovered that I am a word nerd and I have friends. I know Mary Hope's a word nerd because she actually sent me an email a a year or so back 
Uh, and I had not used any word studies. And she said, why didn't you use any word studies in that sermon? And I said, I love that woman. <laughs> so this is for the word nerds. The rest of you can take a brief break. Uh, but that is actually, I will build is actually one word. It's not three words. It's not two words. It's one word. Now, this is for the word nerds right here. You're going to love this. This is, the, this is the Greek breakdown. This word, this one word is first person, singular, future, active, indicative. Now, don't you love that word, nerds? <laughs> but think about what that says. First person, who? Jesus. Singular, who? Jesus. Future, when? That's now. He released it. The future was launched from that point forward. Active, it ain't never quit. But it's indicative that I wanted to spend just a moment on to make some of you very happy today. A Greek indicative word, the indicative mood makes an assertion of fact. That mood is used in Greek when something is not up for discussion. It's used when something, there, there's another kind of word uh, structure that's used when something may or may not happen. It's not indicative. The indicative mood is used for something that will happen. This is fact, it's settled. I will build my church. Now, let's circle my. That's a little word. But you know, Jesus could have easily said, I will build the church, couldn't he? And we'd have all been happy. But he didn't. And look at this. I, this is one of the commentators. I thought, that is powerful. R.T. France wrote, Jesus speaks with extraordinary boldness of my ecclesia. The unusual Greek word order draws particular attention to the my. I don't care what you call it, this ain't your church. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it ain't your pastor's church. This and the church at large belongs to one person and one person only. Jesus. Jesus. And he said, I will build my church. Now let's move forward. Look at what Colossians, Paul got this. He understood it. This is powerful. He, Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or, thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Watch it. Look at the next verse. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Do you know that at this moment in time, the one who spoke, Spoke all into existence is also the one that is keeping it all in order. And yet, this one did not delegate headship of the church. You need to see that. <clears throat> you need to understand that. See, I ran a business for 20 years, been a pastor for another 20 plus. Delegation is a good thing. Because there are people who can do things that, and do them far better than you could ever dream about doing them. Furthermore, you're a human being. You can only do so much. Delegation is a good thing. Jesus could have easily decided, I suppose, in some way to delegate the headship of the church. I suppose, in a way, our Catholic brothers, brethren maybe 
think that that has been done, but I have news for our friend Francis. <laughs> the church belongs to one person and one person only, Jesus. He bought for it, he bought it by his blood, and he's never delegated headship of it. And I, for one, am really glad about that. But look about, look, look in, in uh, Ephesians, Paul writes, he raised him, Jesus, from the dead and seated him at uh, his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I'm hoping sometime in the future to actually do a series on the church. Um, you know, the re I didn't tell you that so you could anticipate that. I told you that so I can be free to move on because, man, there's so much I want to say right now. Uh, but it's his body. It's his body. The older I get, the more contrary my body tends to be. Is mine the only one? Yeah, it's contrary. I mean, it's like, dang. You used to do better in that area than you're doing now, right? But it's my body. Don't make fun of my body. It has served me well for 63 years. It may not be perfect. It may actually look pretty bad from time to time. And it may actually fail me from time to time, but it's my body. And I suspect our Lord Jesus might have the same attitude. Don't talk about my body. Sometimes it's dysfunctional. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't do what I want it to do, but it's my body, and I'm grateful for it, and it's the wisdom of heaven. Oh, I love that, but I feel better now, so we're going to move on. Dallas Willard says this about the church. The church, this is for you, Bob. The church is a marvelous and beautiful living reality that Jesus can be trusted to build and bring to perfection. I love that. A marvelous and beautiful living reality. Sometimes I wonder what Dallas was smoking when he wrote that. <laughs> Maybe it's been a long time since he pastored a church. <laughs> a marvelous and beautiful living reality. But he actually saw something. The other thing that, he, that uh, Dallas Willard, uh, uh, one of the other things he wrote about the church, he said, the church is the schoolhouse of love. Now, let me make a statement that some of you will wonder about for weeks and months and years. And Your brokenness is a great benefit to me. Your brokenness is a great benefit to me. Because it's how God teaches me to love. Do you get that? See, one of the things I think we're going to realize when we're in, in, with the Lord in heaven is all of the dysfunction that bothered us was part of God's divine wisdom to bring about the one thing that's most important to him a sincere honoring and valuing of other people. 
even when they don't deserve it. How else are we going to learn to love our enemies if we can't learn to love within a family called the local church, those who make us really mad? A few weeks ago, uh, you know, my youngest son, Alex, and his wife, Jess, have two sons, Charlie and Selah, and uh, they sent us a video about two weeks ago. Uh, I forget what the, uh, I forget exactly what the scenario was, um, but Selah just reached out and punched Charlie. <laughs> I mean, he's not even a year old, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'd lose track of how old they are. Um, and it was hilarious. And of course, the parents could hardly keep themselves from laughing. But guess what? The family is perfectly designed to train and equip little hitters. Do you see that? So one of the things I think the Lord wants to do today is adjust our attitude toward the church. Your brokenness is my friend for transformation. In fact, I've come to believe that there are three, there's a triune of, I'm not writing any books, so there may be four next week, but right now I'm thinking that there, that God has in his wisdom provided three things for my transformation. One is the Holy Spirit, the other is the Word of God, and the other is a broken church. <laughs> and you want to buy a cabin and escape the broken church. Do you realize that on top of a mountain all by yourself, you will never learn to love? Do you realize that? All right. What is the ecclesia? Let's just get a definition before we move forward. The term was common uh, in common usage before the Christian era and was used to refer to an assembly of persons constituted uh, by well-defined membership. Two things in that that, that that are important, an assembly and well-defined membership, uh, and that is the word ecclesia. And it actually, and most of you know this, but it, it was never meant to be a religious word. It was a civil word. It was used for a civil body of people. In fact, if you read uh, in, um, I think it's Acts 19, I'll bring the verse up in just a moment, we find it used in exactly the way it was used well ahead of the uh, uncovering of the New Testament, the, writing of the, the living and writing of the New Testament. Uh, it, it was used for a, 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 a group of people who were part of a city body who came together for a purpose. That was the ecclesia. Uh, and in Acts 19, uh, you know, there was a, a move of God and uh, there was a real problem with that. And so there was a backlash and the whole city, it says, uh, became in an uproar and they went, they, they gathered together uh, in the uh, in in the in the mini Colosseum, so to speak, uh, because they were uh, rioting against Paul, and the 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 city leader said, or stood up and said, "But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular or the legal assembly, ecclesia." Now, one of the things that, uh, you know, I think maybe going forward is, as we read the New Testament, we might want to pause for a minute and say, how is it being used here? Because I've got a feeling a lot of times uh, in the New Testament, when the church is in view, uh, it's actually an assembly that's being talked about, not necessarily a group of people, so to speak. When you come together in the assembly, the WEB says of uh, 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen, 18, uh, I hear that divisions exist among you. 
So it can be used the same way, right? But now, the primary way it's used and the most important way that ecclesia is used, uh, Paul uses it this way in Acts 20, 28. Be on guard, he says, to the elders of the church in Ephesus, uh, for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God. And then it goes on to say, which he has purchased with his own blood. So now what do we have? The church is a group of people who have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Now the word is applied to the church worldwide, the church at large. It can be applied, and we see it in Scripture, to the regional church or a group of churches. It can be applied uh, to the local congregation, and it can be applied in Scripture to a church that's meeting in someone's house, even though they're part of a larger group. That's ecclesia. Now, we know what an ecclesia is. What's this? Huh? Huh? A heart attack in a box. That's right, glory. Man, I'm telling you. Franklin speaks truth. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, we, 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 Kelly has led me to rediscover five guys. And, and uh, my word. Stop. What is this? It's a Big Mac. Well, technically, it's a Big Mac box. Is there a Big Mac in the box? But one thing we can agree to is the box is not the Big Mac. Now, I'm personally grateful for the box because I wouldn't want any 16-year-old handing me my Big Mac from their grubby hands, <laughs> nor any 82-year-old for that matter. So I'm grateful for the box, but listen to me, the box is not the Big Mac. The church is not all that we see. See, a lot of us are confused about that and discouraged about that. But the church is not all that we see, but all that we see may be serving a wonderful purpose. But I tell you, one thing you'll never find, you'll never find the ecclesia being used for a building. But a building serves a good purpose when you gather together, doesn't it? But the other thing I want us to understand is not all of the human people that you would look at from, uh, 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 from your physical eye who appear to be the church are actually the church. Now, I know every group thinks they are the church. But I got news for every group. We are all a mixture. And from every subgroup, every church, every little ecclesia, there will be those on that day that Jesus will look at and say, I never knew you. But yet they were an active part of the church. Now, the interesting thing is you and I have brothers and sisters. If you are part of the church, you and I have brothers and sisters all over the planet. And you're going to say, what are we going to do with that? Well, the good news is, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm bearing this instruction 
uh, or this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. Actually, it's probably a really good indicator of someone being actually blood-bought and in the church is over the span of their life, if you watch them have a, a tendency to continually turn away from wickedness, it's a pretty good indicator that something's going on. Right? I've, I say this every few months. I find a way of saying it. Um, maybe it's because I don't want to stand before the Lord, and he said, you never said that. Um, but it really is, in some ways, um, agonizing for me as a pastor who spends his life investing in people to recognize that some of the people you have invested in and perhaps even ministered with will one day hear him say, away from me, I never knew you. And those people are going to protest and say, wait a minute, we drove out demons in your name. We did this in your name and we did that. And he's going to say, I didn't know you. You were never part of my church. But that's part of new life. New life's a box. That holds a portion of my church. Listen, I want to say this to you as a pastor. Being in the box does not make you a Big Mac. It doesn't even make you a sesame seed on the Big Mac. Being born again because you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Bent the knee. Made a declaration. I am cut off from the living God. I have no life relationship with him. My destiny is hell. And Jesus, you're my only hope, but I take hold of you. See, that's not only the entrance into eternal life. That is entrance into the church, his church. And there's no other way. There's a place where Paul actually uses baptism in a way that many find a bit unusual. He says, you have been baptized by one spirit into one body. What's he talking about? He's not talking about baptism in water, and he's not talking about baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about a moment in which you crossed over from life to death, and the Holy Spirit did this glorious thing. He placed you in the ecclesia, the one that Jesus has been building for 2,000 years, the one that will never be stopped. So the question today, and I know it's an uncomfortable question, but it's got to be asked from time to time. Do I belong to Jesus? Am I part of the ecclesia that he is building? Now this is what I love about the Lord. He is so kind and good to convict us, to remove the blinders from us if we're willing to see. There's a place at the end, I think it's of 1 Corinthians, it may be 2 Corinthians, where Paul writes, examine yourself. He writes that. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. And so I think that would be the word of the Lord right now uh, to, to us in this moment, in this moment of troubled times uh, when God is raising up a church, and it'll be a, it is a glorious church. But the question is, am I part of it? Now, if you are, and if we are, 
We then go to 1 Timothy 3, 14, 15. Because I'm going to tell you something. This church that Paul wrote about is alive and well on planet earth today. It may be yelled at in the marketplace. It may be shouted down by all of the loud voices, but it is shining for anyone who's actually looking for a light. Paul wrote this, I write these things to you hoping to come to you soon, but if I should be delayed, I have written so that you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church, the ecclesia of the living God. Not the ecclesia of man, not the slick ecclesia down the street, not the slick ecclesia with this, not this ecclesia over here who, who thinks that they're this little holy huddle of people excluding everybody else. Take every prejudice you could imagine right now and it's not any of those. The church, the ecclesia of the living God. Now we see what he thinks of that church. The pillar of and foundation of the truth. Pillar. Foundation. A column which supports the weight. Yeah, you were right. Foundation. That which provides a firm foundation. Karen, you guys can come up. There you are. You guys can come up. Uh, you do realize the world is shaking. Or have you been asleep? <laughs> I mean, you get up every, I get up every, I turn on my computer, I eat my yogurt, and I, I open the news for a few minutes, so for about 10 minutes I can see the shaking. And man, it's shaking. The world is shaking. And then I remind myself, hallelujah, I am part of a body on the face of the earth that is not shaken. And it will not be shaken and it will not be stopped and I will shine. I am a pillar. I am a foundation. We are a pillar. We are a foundation. Let's say that we are a pillar. We are a foundation. That's a power. Look at this picture. See, they knew something. I did something there. I'm not sure what it was. Um, I got too excited. But listen, when Paul was writing, it's not like these guys had not discovered what a solid pillar was. They, they use more pillars than we do in our building. They got it. He understood this is a support mechanism. And he understood. Uh, look at that bridge. Been standing. It's an aqueduct and a bridge. Been standing for over 2,000 years. Listen, these guys understood foundation. When Paul wrote that the church of the living God is the pillar and the foundation of truth, he knew exactly what he was saying. And I'm here to tell you today that that church is alive and well. It is active and powerful. It's not shrieking back. It's not ducking its head. This, by the way, gives us one more test by which we might be able to judge are we in that ecclesia or not. The true ecclesia of the living God loves truth, pursues truth, hungers for truth, 
goes after truth, is impacted by truth, bends the knee to truth, shares truth with their family and their friends. They own the truth. That's a really good litmus test. If you don't love the truth, as a pastor and a friend, I say to you, you're probably not in the ecclesia of the living God. Because when you're born again by the Spirit of Jesus and He comes to live inside of you, that lover of truth Himself, how are you going to escape loving the truth? If the one who is actually called truth lives in you, how can you escape a love of the truth unless you're deceived? Unless you've bought a religious lie. Unless you've talked yourself into inclusion in a group that you're actually not in. But maybe you are part of the box. That's us. His bride. And it will be without spot and blemish. And I got news for you. I got a strong suspicion it already is in his eyes. I live with the most beautiful blind... uh, Bald woman on the face of the earth. It's hard for a hairdresser, isn't it, to lose their hair? And to wonder, you wonder about their identity. No, sir. Hair is hair. Beauty is beauty. They're two different things. Jesus loves his church. And we're far more perfect in his eyes than we think we are. The church he is building, nothing can stop it. It's a city that's shining, a light in the darkness. Say it with me. It is. I am. We are. Could I hand it over to you, Alan? Is that okay? I agree with Steve. This song um, is like an anthem that we, the church, can declare together with one heart, one mind, and one voice. Last week, Steve spoke on the gospel of Jesus which is the hope of the ages, and today on the church he is building. Nothing can stop it. So we invite you to stand and sing with us uh, one more time this declaration about the hope of the ages. of Jesus, it's the hope of the ages, getting brighter and brighter, and standing forever, the church he is building, nothing can stop it, it's a city that's shining, a light in the dark.
God's done, and um, then we'll have, let's see, I need another mic, what do I need to do, I need that mic, okay, <clears throat> we're going to ask for words of knowledge from the congregation, and you can say, well, Alan, what is a word of knowledge, what we're working, looking for is the Holy Spirit to speak to his people. Had a message of the sermon of, of the church, who the church is. Now we're going to take our pastor up on it. Amen. Who is the church? It's the body of Christ. And so, as you give a, what, what the scriptures call a word of knowledge, if there's something on your heart that that you would like to, that you feel like that there's somebody here perhaps could use healing in a part of their physical body. It could be emotionally. It could be financially. It could just be a word about uh, about anything of life. If the Lord gives you something, we would like for you to share it with us. We're going to put it then up on the screen. And uh, so let me pray, and then we'll start this part of the service. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, oh God, for this message that we've heard about your church. So Lord Jesus, we want to take you up on it. This is who you say we are, is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The church of Jesus Christ. The expression of the kingdom of God upon this earth. Speak to your people, O oh God, in this house. Give us what's on your heart, O oh God, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Does anybody have a word or a testimony? Just raise your hand right back here. Blake will run there. I believe this is the heart of God. When you heard that word, you know, about maybe you are and maybe you aren't a part of God's church. God's heart is that he wants everybody. Everybody is his and everybody has the opportunity to say yes to him. So don't take offense. Don't be afraid. He never, he's not pushing anybody away. Jesus said that um, anyone who comes to him, he would in no wise turn away. So if there's any check um, in your spirit, just just go face to face with them and make it clear, make it sure, because there's not one person in here that he doesn't want completely, completely. Amen. Now, Blake, how are we to set up the front? What are we doing this morning? Yeah, we have prayer pods on both sides. On the left side, um, if Janine and Seth, if you guys could go ahead and come, go up, and then we have 
Kathy and John on the right side, and they're, they're both for general prayer, but on the right side facing the stage, it's an emphasis on salvation. So like what Jan is saying, what the message from Steve is saying, if you feel, if your heart is compelled to give your life to the Lord and get saved, we'd like you to go to the front over there. Okay, I think there's one right over here. If you would, if you're in a prayer pod, you, do, you can come on up and sit Amen. I feel like the Lord is saying to someone and some people here that you're not useless, that you may have been feeling useless and you have met, maybe have felt useless in times past, but the Lord wants you to know today that you are useful, that you are full of his use, that he has chosen you. You have been chosen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to be on his team. You have been picked out. If you feel, have a feeling of being use, useless, was the way you began it, I think. Uh, if you have, if you feel like you're useless, or um, if that ministers, you can feel it. You can feel the witness of the Spirit, and we'll. The first word was uh, for salvation, and then the second word was uselessness. Who else we got, Blake? Okay. From our morning prayer, uh, a strong word was deliverance. So I'm just going to leave it at that. The, the ability or the Spirit wants to deliver people today. So deliverance. Okay, you're saying in the prayer this morning, that was a big thing that came up. Yeah, it was a theme. One of the themes that ran through a lot of our prayers this morning was that the church would be used today to deliver people. It would be a place of impact. Any particular deliverance? Of, uh, what comes to mind? Anything? No, it was more just um, that we recognize that Jesus' ministry and his time on earth was a lot about deliverance and healing, was a yes. lot of his ministry. And the church has sometimes backed off of that. Yes. And so we wanted to just, the Holy Spirit was inviting us to re-engage, to not be, that people, he, the Lord more than us wants people to be totally free of these things that have been dogging them their whole lives and through generations Amen. of families. And uh, so we just believe, have a measure of faith for deliverance today. So deliverance, is, that's, that's just something that you can't sh get rid of. Yeah. Something in, uh, it could be uh, an addiction, it could be anything, right? Yeah, it can something be. Something that you'd like to get rid of. It can be emotional or physical or, or any of these areas. The Lord okay. is not limited in any way. All right, deliverance, okay. I'd, I'd like to add on to the yes. uh, feeling of being useless. Yes. I had a word of knowledge that goes with that it's okay. um you are significant by the blood of jesus amen and I, I believe he was touching on that but that's you feel you feel like you are useless but you are actually significant by but actually significant yeah. just say feeling of being useless useless but actually significant and you can ask jason how to spell that and um I kind of saw a younger woman, that's a relative term, but I would just say younger than myself, and kind of floating over her head in white letters was the word future. And they were kind of floating there, uh, but the piece and the part of this is it was a legacy already spoken forward but optional. And whoever that young woman is, I just sense it's somebody in this room, but whoever that young woman is, the, the piece that goes with that is because it was written in bright white letters, that future that God has spoken forward is a bright and a pure and a wonderful one, but optional. And for whatever reason, I just sensed it had to be chosen or it wouldn't be. And it might have to be chosen a couple times going forward. Future. And whoever that woman is, I sense she's somewhere under this roof. Don't leave here and say, oh, if I only had a sign, this was your sign today and right now. Choose it. Amen. I would put... Uh future slash one and then uh, 
future slash a woman. And what I'm going to do, I feel an impression as we continue on here, I am going to ask every, uh, if, if this is, any of this is pertaining to anybody, the only thing I want to ask you to do is stand up just so we can pray. I'm going, I'm going to give, I feel like I need to give everybody an opportunity to respond. That's what he's saying. You just, you got to say yes to it or, uh, and I don't understand the spiritual science behind that. You know, and even what we're doing here can look a little confusing, like, Alan, this really is a little weird. It doesn't really make sense. I will totally agree with you. No problem. But I've seen it work. So if you're in the person that this can help, and for the sake of doing it under the scriptures, we will move forward. Who's next? So I just wanted to give a testimony. Um, about four months ago in early spring, I hurt my shoulder, and um, it really was just kind of a small thing, but it just never healed. And so um, I went to hopefully have some laser therapy done on it. And when the doctor, you know, did some tests on my shoulder, he said, well, you have frozen shoulder. And he said, um, the good news is it'll work itself out, but it'll take about 18 months. <laughs> wow. said, but the bad news is... Exciting. Uh, he said, I could do some therapy on it, but it's extremely painful, or I can sing you somewhere and have you put to sleep, and they can just rip it back in place, and it'll be six months of physical therapy. And I said, well, there's a third option. I'm believing God can heal this. So I Amen. got prayer last Sunday, and John and Seth prayed for me, and it was, you know, just sitting here, it didn't hurt, but it was range of motion if I would go to reach back or up or anything like that. And I want to say it is probably 70% better than what it was. And I'm going for 100% today. <laughs> Amen. Okay, Christ and God. what we'll do is we'll put up there shoulder, a prayer for, uh, we'll just put shoulder up there uh, on our words. Uh, right here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, Seth. <laughs> Didn't mean to look around you. Um, earlier in the service, um, I just felt anxiety rise up in my heart and I knew it wasn't mine. And uh, every now and then it would come back. And when I was just uh, sitting waiting to, to share, I felt like the, ang the, the anxiety this person has been having has been so tangible that you have heart palpitations and it constantly feels like you're on uh, uh, pins and needles, uh, almost to the point of paralysis sometimes. So anxiety that has anxiety. breached spiritual into the physical. Okay, I put the word up there, anxiety. And also anybody that wants Seth's hat. And also, okay, all right. Ed. I saw a picture of some people looking at a TV screen, and it was blank. Um, what that said to me is people are looking for vision, but they're drawing a blank. And there's a couple reasons it can be blank. One is there's no power because you're not connected with God to get the vision. The second is there's something sin or some issue can be keeping us from seeing and the third is we just need to ask we want it but we need to ask okay so fresh vision would work fresh vision okay who else there's one right back here two black i'm sorry i don't want to mess up your flow here this is good I just wanted to share a testimony from, was it last week, Blake? Uh, last week, one of the words was pain on the outside of your knee. Uh, and that previous Friday, I had been in the gym and I did something to my knee. Um, and I've had knee issues for like as long as I can remember. I'm very tall and prone to that. So I have soreness when I do certain things or if I squat down, I get like my knees will pop and stuff. Um, so I had Blake pray for me last week and immediately the pain was gone and I haven't had any any popping or soreness or anything, I, it's better than it was before. So I just want to urge everybody, if there's something on there that pertains to you, go forward and get prayer for it because it's on there because God wants to do something about it. Okay, prayer for a knee. Go Jesus, knee. Who's next? Right there. <clears throat> You know, so many people want to be like Peter, um, who was such a leader in the church, and the 
one who could confess before the other disciples. And he was that way. But when trial came, when push came to shove, yeah. he denied Jesus three times. And he was a leader. And he was strong in the Lord. And I believe what the Lord is saying is that though we want to lead and though we want to be strong and that's in our heart we don't make it but I believe what the Lord is saying as he turned Peter around to make a pillar he will do that for each and every one of you in the church everyone amen 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 song that Karen was singing earlier, uh, there was the lyrics about, I can rest because it's all in God's hands. I got the sense that, that there's something that somebody here is holding on to that you haven't given to God to put into his hands. And this may tie into what Seth was talking about too with the anxiety. Um, it could be something that you're holding on to and you can't rest because of that. Give it to God. Give it to God. And how would you, what would be your word there? Like, just say, give it to God. Release. Release. The what? Release. Release. Okay. Release, input slash, give it to God. Okay. I seen, uh, I was sitting here and asked the Lord about, and he showed me, a, a, I think it was a young woman, similar to what he was saying but was sitting in the shadows and the Lord's telling uh, her to come out into the light that God's love will take care of Amen. everything. Okay, uh, put up there, come into the light. Come into the light. And you can say, well, Alan, that doesn't make sense to me. It makes sense to someone in here. I promise you that. Amen. So you don't, you don't, a lot of these things you, you might say, Alan, I, it doesn't make sense. I don't connect with it. It's okay. Say praise God. Because <laughs> it's connecting with somebody. Okay, anybody else? One right back there and one right over there. <clears throat> now, I'm in no hurry. I hope you're not. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say to Jesus, come in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And he will do so. Thank you. Amen. Put up there, please, day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. I wanted to share another word of knowledge for healing. Uh, it's if you have stomach issues and pop, liver, so you might have stomach issues and or liver issues. Stomach. Slash that's, liver. That's, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, put stomach slash liver. We're going to have the whole congregation healed. Do you realize this? Come on, go ahead. I'm excited. When I was a kid, one of my dad's favorite adjectives for me was useless. That was my name. And later on, uh, when I grew a little older, he discouraged any of us to get anything to do with God, calling it a crutch. And... Uh, when I grew up and got married, I had this huge sense of shame. I didn't even like going to Sunday school because I thought I was the worst dressed and the poorest and all this kind of stuff. But somewhere along the line, the Lord drew me into his word. And uh, before I even left California where I lived, people were coming to me. <laughs> which is funny to me because they wanted. And today, um, interestingly enough, the Lord has led me to uh, talk to people that are lonely and minister to people that are shut down in their home, shut, they're in jail and prison, you know, that little list that Jesus gives. 
about the thirsty and the hungry and all that because I can tell you that I know what it feels like to feel useless. And God has given me great perspective and great love. And he comes, I wish I could say it was more here, but it's mostly at home. He comes into my home and he ministers to me. He comes and sits down with me and talks to me through his word. And really, I feel like it's in person. But anyway, I would just say thank you to, uh, to the Lord and to all the people here that encourage me and um, probably don't know me very well. But anyway, that's my, a little bit of my testimony. A lot of people under that, and I think you mentioned the word shame. Isn't that right? We don't have that word up there yet. We have the, the uh, being useless, feeling useless. Uh, but let's put shame. It could be under a uh, type of emotional uh, shame. A lot of times that's put on to us by other people. Okay? Right there. Yes, I just wanted to um, read something my Baptist preacher friend sent me this morning I was going to read it to Steve along with the, its confirmation I guess forsake not the assembling of ourselves the pandemic has led us to be isolated but God teaches us to congregate the nearer we are to the church the closer we will be to God we need a true love for the sanctuary of God how lovely and beautiful should the church be to those who are saved the church is of great worth to those who love God. If Jesus died for the church, then we who are saved should tend it faithfully. I just thought that went along with this, today's. Amen and amen. Sorry. That's wonderful. Amen. Okay, Blake. Let's, uh, we're going to pray for these. Uh, we have the baptistry that is open. Anybody like to jump in and get wet? This is your day. That's what this is. This is your day. And you can say, I, I even had to talk to the person here a while back. They just had the need to get baptized, and they didn't know why. I said, that's God. That's God. Totally in the heart, not in the head. It, the head was absent. It was totally in the heart. So if you just have it in your heart, you'd love to be baptized. You don't have an explanation. Guess what? We do not require one. You just say, I want to get wet. This is for you over here. We have the prayer pods, and we uh, they're active right now, but there's more people up here. If you just like to pray this morning, nobody bother you. We get it. This is what, what we call the altar right here is for. Uh, that's that's the no-bother zone. You just come and, and acknowledge and pray to God. It's something about moving or, or responding. So now, if any of these words up here, before we'll... we'll I'm going to pray if you want to stand. If it, just stand if you feel like any of these words apply to you. And if you're watching online, uh, also this is for you too. Is there anybody in here that you feel like any of these words apply to you and you want prayer? Just stand. I had one other word as I was going on that just came back to me. It was uh, arthritis. It was a, uh, it's like the, I was trying to get more, but I was listening to everybody. It's arthritis. Would you put up that one word up there, please? Arthritis. Anybody? Okay. All right. Okay, I'm just going to pray for you. If you would like additional prayer, feel free to come forward. If not, it is our hope that in these perilous times, that this church of Jesus Christ is where God's people can come together. We can pray for each other. We can find healing and comfort and deliverance and, and freedom. And we want to, every Sunday, take God up on His Word. We're not claiming we'll do it perfect. But we will acknowledge we're going to do it. And we're going to let God sort out the perfect. So, Lord Jesus, we come to you in prayer right now. Asking, you say in your word that we have not because because we ask not. So, Lord God, we ask now 
out of every fiber of our being in this house and in this congregation. We ask, oh God, for healing in all of these areas of everybody that's in this house, everybody that's watching online right now. We just ask by the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that the needs of your people, oh God, might be met this day because we just showed up and we're asking, oh God, we believe, oh God, that these words that were called out was by your spirit. So by the authority that's in the word of God, we speak healing to those that are in this place and we pronounce healing to those that are in this place. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that healing might be in this house to be a testimony into the presence of God on this earth. Be in our hearts, O oh God, in the greatest healing of all, that we might have the joy of our salvation and that we might express it in the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be in this place this day is our prayer, O oh God. And if anyone's in here and does not know you, we pray that today is that day that they'll find you, O oh God. Let it be done. And the children of God said, Amen and Amen. Thank you very much. We're going to, Karen's going to lead us out in one more verse of this last song. You're welcome to go. You're welcome to stay. We're still into ministry time in prayer. Thank you. Hey, online family, we thank you so much for being here with us today. We hope that uh, the Lord was kind to you and that you felt his presence throughout this service today. And we just want to send you off with a blessing this week. And we ask that you stay in prayer of the words of knowledge that we've had and those that need healing. We just ask that you keep them in your thoughts and prayers this week. I'd like to send you out this week with a scripture from Jeremiah 17. It's verse 7. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This week I want you to be that tree by the water. I want your roots to extend as far as you'll allow them to extend and even further in Christ Jesus. Be that life-giving light that water, that peaceful brook that people can rest by. That's what I want for each of you this week. Be blessed in all that you do. May the Lord bless you, your comings and your goings. May he heal you of anything that you call upon him for. Have trust in the Lord in all that you do. We love you, we bless you, and we thank you for being here with us. We'll see you this Wednesday at the House of Prayer.